as one woman became incurably sick, a little girl was born into the world who was destined to die at 12 years old. And one day, 12 years later, their paths would cross in this astonishing way as they both become recipients of Jesus' miraculous power. One healed of a debilitating disease that defiled her and one raised from the dead. Jesus can do what no one else can do. He is the all-sufficient Savior because he can do what no one else can. He has power over demons. He has power over disease. He has power over death. Now, as we think about these three miracle stories, I'm going to give you four encouragements in three minutes, okay? (laughs) Number one, when human solutions are gone, hope is not. No human could solve any of these problems. All of these situations were beyond repair. But that was not a factor that entered the equation as long as Jesus was around. What no human solution can fix, Jesus can. And the greatest illustration of this, the greatest solution Jesus ever provided, is the solution to the problem of our sin. There was no human solution for our condemnation before a holy God. And yet Jesus provided that solution in his death and resurrection. Brothers and sisters, understand this. We were hopelessly condemned. We were slaves of the devil. We were defiled because of our sin and unclean before a holy God. And we were dead in our trespasses and sins. In a very real sense, we didn't need one of these miracles. We needed all three of these miracles to save us. And Jesus did that for us at the cross. The cross is the lens by which we must view all of life, and that is true even when life seems hopeless. Jesus does what no one else can. And so when hope is gone, it's really not if we have Christ. Second, go to Jesus in your time of need. You know, it's wonderful to believe that Jesus can help you, but you've got to go. You got to ask. You got to pray. You got to seek. You got to knock. All of these people went to Jesus for help in their time of need. Have that same urgency in your life with Christ. Go to him in your time of need. Third, believe that he is able and willing to give you what you need. He is able and he is willing. I I love what the woman says with the, the hemorrhage. She doesn't say, if I touch his garments, I might get well. No. If I touch his garments, I will get well. He is able and he is willing to help you. Beloved, do you believe that Jesus is able and willing to help you? You know, the book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus became one of us, entered the world as a human being, and went to the cross, suffered, and died so that he might provide help to us in our time of need. He did not go to the cross so that when you come to him for help, he would say no. He is able and he is willing to help you. Finally, never give up hope in Christ. Don't quit asking. Don't quit seeking. Don't quit knocking. If we learn anything from the third miracle, it's this. Don't give up hope even when it seems hopeless. Jesus' timing might not be our timing, but his timing is the best timing. And that is true even when it seems like a situation has gotten worse since we started praying about it rather than better. You ever had that happen in your life? You say, I'm going to dedicate myself to pray about this problem. And you do that, and it just is like the wheels come off as soon as you start praying. Don't give up hope. God is at work. And there is nothing that God does not work for our good and for his glory if we love him. And so never give up hope in Christ. Who is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? He is Jesus, the son of the most high God. He is Jesus, the Lord. He is Jesus, our all-sufficient Savior.